Okay, so in this video I'm just going to talk you through um, setting up smart controls in Logic, um, assigning them to parameters of plugins, and then doing external assignments from the smart controls to controls on the Novation Launch Key. So first off, we're going to select the RetroSynth so we click in the channel strip in the inspector and select the retro synth like that. You can resize any plugin window so it takes up less space um, like that. I'm also going to select a delay. I'm going to use tape delay for this demonstration. So when we start adding loads of different plugins, uh, you do start to run out of actual space on your screen. The shortcut to hide all currently open plugins is V. So when I press V, that happens. Next up, we need to open up the smart controls. The smart control button is up in the top left hand corner um, and it's a little dial. You'll see there it says smart controls key command for that is B. So down in the smart controls area um, we can see the current presets for our selection. Um, so, so as things stand from the preset we've got cut off on smart control number one. So when I move that, that also alters the cut off in the retro synth. We are going to set the smart controls ourselves. We do that by opening the smart control inspector, which is this little eye in the left hand corner. I open that up. So you've got various preset um, displays for your smart controls. If I click here, you can see there's quite a selection. It's important to remember that because we are going to assign our own smart controls, it doesn't really matter too much which one you go for. For example, if I want eight controls, I could go for general audio eight, which puts them in two blocks of four. Equally, I could go for generic black eight, like that, or modern synth eight. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's just the amount of controls and how it looks. So for example, um, Modern Synth 12 will look very similar to that, but you've just got 12 controls that you can assign instead. So <clears throat> for the purposes of this, I'm gonna go for um, General Audio 8, which looks like this. The first thing we need to do is assign the parameters from the plugins to the eight different smart controls. So this is parameter mapping which is mapping internally. So I click on the learn button there and for the first four I'm going to assign those to the amp envelope. So I'm going to assign number one to attack, number two to decay, number three to sustain and number four to release. To do this, I select the first control. It says cut off at the moment, but that doesn't matter. That will change as soon as we alter a parameter in one of the plugins. So I've got that first smart control selected, and over here in the retro synth and the amp envelope, I'm going to move the attack up and down. Now that's actually moving two smart controls at the moment. That's because the sixth smart control was already assigned to amp envelope attack, but that will change when we get to it. So then the second one I'm going to assign to decay, the third one sustain, and the fourth one release. And then over in this second half of the smart controls I'm going to set the first one there to the cutoff in the filter section of the retro synth, the second one to resonance, 
The third one I'm going to set to cut off by LFO, so that's there. And then just to demonstrate that you're not just restricted to one plugin on that final smart control, I'm going to assign that to feedback on the tape delay. Once all those are done, you click the learn button, everything's safe. Um, it's also worth just turning the wheel control of the LFO all the way down so you hear the full effect of the cutoff by LFO when we come to that. So next we're going to assign those eight smart controls to the eight knobs are above the drum pads on the Novation launch key. So I click learn next to external assignment, select the first smart control, amp envelope attack and being very careful not to move any other controls I just give that first pot a little twiddle then I move to decay to number two Sustain to number three, release to number four, cut off to number five, resonance to number six, cut off by LFO to number seven, and feedback to number eight. And again, as soon as you've done that, turn the learn button off. So let's check all those have worked. So we should see the attack of the amp envelope move up and down here. If I just take that feedback off and the cut off by LFO, let's hear that in action. So at the moment we've got a very slow attack, meaning that the note will take some time to get to its full volume. We have a short attack, it's there quicker. Decay is how quickly or slowly the note gets to its sustained level. So the sustained level is quite low at the moment. I'll make it a little bit lower. If we've got a quick decay, we get a click and then the sound drops. If I increase that, said the sustain is the the level that the note is at after the decay so if it's at the same as the attack it just remains at that same volume it's lower you'll hear a drop and then release is what happens to the note when you let go of it when you release it so if it's a long release the note will carry on for some time if it's nothing, the note will stop straight away. And then we can hear the cutoff. So the cutoff is where is the frequency that that uh, low pass filter actually kicks in. So if it's turned all the way up, it's letting nearly all of the sound through, nearly all of the frequencies through. If I decrease that. It's letting less and less of the higher frequencies through. The resonance just puts a little boost at that cutoff frequency. So you can see it's just increasing the frequency that the cutoff is set to. And the effect of that on the sound we increase it. Like that. Um, the LFO, the LFO is basically putting a cyclical movement on to the sound. So, because the LFO is connected to the filter, it's equivalent of me taking that cut off and moving it up and down really quickly. Like that. If I turn that LFO up, you'll hear that. 
And then finally, the feedback on the delay. Just close that window so you can see it. The feedback on the delay is how long the delay actually repeats for. So it's just do it once there. I increase it. It's longer all the way up. So that's what the different sounds, <coughs> the different parameters um, sound like. Um, next up, if you want to use this in a different project or um, on a different computer, you need to know how to save all this. The easiest way to save everything that we've just done is to ch save the channel strip setting. So that'll save the plugins used and the settings within them. It'll save the smart controls, um, including those external assignments. So to save the channel strip setting in the inspector, we click the setting button, ch save channel strip setting as, and then we name it. Um, it's important to note at this point where that is actually saving to. So that is saving to music, audio music apps, channel strip settings, instrument. That's music, audio music apps, channel strip settings, instrument. If you can't see music on the side of your save window, if you click on your home button, then you can go to music, audio music apps, channel strip settings, instrument. So I click save. What that now means is if I just open a new project with an empty channel strip, if I want to load up all those settings I've just had, if I click on setting, there it is the best of setting. That means now all those smart controls are still there. And everything is where it should be. If you need to transfer this to another computer, you need to know how to find that. So the process then would be to go to your finder, music, channel strip settings, instrument, you would then put that particular file, so in this case the best is setting onto your OneDrive or onto a memory stick, a hard drive, email it to yourself, it's not a big file, 20 KB, um, and then on the computer that you want to actually use this channel strip setting on, you would then go to music, audio music apps, channel strip settings, instrument, and you could drag and drop that CST file into that folder. That would mean then that when you opened up Logic and you click on your channel strip settings, you would find your setting would appear there and you would be able to load it up from there. I hope that's been useful.